Welcome to Statistics for Proteomics, a series of short lectures introducing key concepts in this area in conceptual and accessible manner for everybody interested to, to learn more. The topic of today's lecture is going to be missing values in proteomics data sets and specifically what mechanisms give rise to such missing values as there are a variety of different reasons why uh, a protein or peptide is quantified in some samples but not in others, which is what we call missing values. While subsequent lectures are going to focus on uh, more advanced topics related to, to missing values, such as a very important type of missing values, so important that they're called non-ignorable missing data, not to be ignored, which is an area that will be introduced by Alex Franks. Uh, and subsequently, we'll also discuss methods for imputing missing values when that is appropriate. So the first thing to realize with missing values is that you have to resist the urge to impute them, ignore them, or, or just um, remove them. From, from your data. Rather, you have to try to understand what mechanism gave rise to those missing values, because depending on the mechanism, you can gain a lot of insight and understanding of what these values would have been if they were not missing. And that can be key to informing what you do next with the data. You should also not necessarily associate missing values with a problem because sometimes they're expected and desirable, as in the case when the protein wasn't present in the sample to begin with. Uh, there are a variety of mechanisms uh, as outlined here, and they'll go through uh, these particular mechanisms in succession. Now, the first and very common mechanism for missing values is when a protein or its peptides are not analyzed. The data were never acquired. And this happens with different types of data acquisition as here illustrated with data dependent acquisition, data independent acquisition, and targeted acquisition. In each case, the heat maps show the ion maps of the experiment where uh, individual ions are being plotted in, in yellow and, 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 and green, depending on their abundance. Uh, the, the green corresponds to high abundance, yellow to low, in the space of M over Z versus retention time. While the particular ions isolated for analysis are circled in red squares. So you can see that with data dependent acquisition by design, only a subset of the ions are being sampled. And this is because the instrument with the parameters of operation doesn't have the time to sample all of the other ions. So by design, only a subset of ions are analyzed. Uh, this is also the case with targeted analysis. As you can see to the far right, again, uh, only a subset of the ions are being analyzed. With DAA acquisition, that subset is much larger. It encompasses all of the ions within certain retention time and M over Z set of windows. Uh, but uh, again, there, there can be uh, many ions that are not being analyzed, even in that case. What is important to realize here, depending on the sampling mechanism, is that the probability of an ion to be analyzed depends very strongly on its abundance, particularly in the case of the data dependent acquisition. The algorithms prioritize ions for analysis based on their abundance. So highly abundant ions are less likely uh, to be missed. Uh, they're more likely to be sampled. And that is important. In addition to the stochasticity of the missing data, there is also a abundance dependent component. Now, sampling a protein or its peptides is obviously not enough to identifying it. Uh, simply having measured a few ions originating from that protein doesn't mean that the protein will be quantified. And many missing values uh, originate from 
uh, peptides that were sampled but not identified. And that is particularly uh, the case with the data independent acquisition that allows to acquire uh, all of the detectable ions within the sampled windows, but because of the high complexity of the data, many of the sampled peptides may not be identified. And that's another type of another type of mechanism contributing to missing values, and it's going to have its own specific characteristics, meaning that it's going to depend on peptide abundance, but also uh, peptide amino acid sequence, fragmentation pattern, and other properties. Uh, again, you can see that the missing values are not uh, random with respect to peptide properties. Another mechanism that can contribute to missing values is when the uh, abundance of the peptides was below the detection mechanism, below the detection limit, as exemplified here on the top, uh, with ions in the area indicated with this black arrow here on the top of around uh, uh, 862, 863. You can see that when the accumulation time was short, about a millisecond, there were no ions detected there, while increasing accumulation time a hundredfold resulted in the robust detection of multiple ions. And this missingness is clearly strongly dependent on the abundance of the ions, and therefore very informative. In fact, if the detection limit is well characterized, not observing a value can immediately tell us, tell us that the abundance of the analyte of interest was below a certain uh, level. Another reason why the value might be missing of a protein is that it wasn't there to begin with in the sample. Many proteins are expressed only in some cell types, such as hemoglobin is present in erythrocytes and uh, hormones are expressed only by some specialized cells and so on. And this is a wonderful example for a case where we don't want to impute the data. So the bottom line of this very short introduction is that the path of dealing with missing values should start by understanding them, asking what is the mechanism contributing to not having measured uh, that protein in that sample. And once we understand the mechanism, that can inform the approach because different mechanisms require different approaches. And that will be the subject of uh, further lectures, part of the sequel, with the next one focusing on non-ignoring of uh, data that are very important, specifically uh, cases when missing values uh, are not at random, but they're strongly dependent on specific properties of the peptides.